Sea of Red, it's time for another Fireside Chat, the official podcast of Flames fans. It's go time. Well, the Flames are back home, coming off a 3-1-1 week on the road, and I'm Dan, alongside Matt, as always, to break down this road trip and the last big road trip of the season. Matt, before we get into each game, what are your overall thoughts on this road trip? Well, frankly, you can't complain with a 3-1-1 trip on the road, especially when you're playing the best and second best team in the NHL and two teams that are fighting for their playoff lives. And Detroit, who is also there. That was the confidence booster Yeah, for the week. Well, let's jump into taking a look at these games. The Calgary Flames, as we know, um, recently, what was the date on it? Uh, the 21st of February played against the Boston Bruins here in Calgary. Put up a pretty good fight. Boston ended up winning 4-3 against Calgary, but I think we all said, you know what? The Flames look good against the best team in the league, and they had to do it again on the road right after the trade deadline on the 25th. Calgary was in Boston, this time a bit of a different result. The Flames ended up beating the Bruins 5-2 to in this game. Um, Rask's home point streak ended at 20 for the Bruins as they lost to the Flames. And Matt, when I watched this game, all I could say to myself was, this looks like a team that could be at the top of the West. I mean, this looked like last year's, you know, Western Conference winning Calgary Flames. Yeah, and like it was good to see that they were able to skate with the Bruins and actually make a game of it and win. And then I was immediately curious, were they going to get overconfident from that point? I was thinking the and, same thing. You know, because that's been the trap that this team's fallen into, is they have a good game against one of the better teams and then go on a slide. And, you know, they had full marks in this game. They came to play, and they played very well. And they did not take the Bruins for granted, and... It was an excellent game by the Flames. They out-hit, out-chanced, and out-scored the opposition, and that's what the Flames need to do to be successful. Their two newest defensemen, Derek Forbort and Eric Gustafson, both played. Uh, both put up pretty big minutes. Forbort had 17.54 for his total time on ice, and Gustafson had 21 minutes total time on ice, so... Quite a bit of playtime for those guys. Gustafson even got his first point as a flame. He got an assist on the third goal of the game, the second Monaghan goal. Um, overall, first thoughts in this game about those guys? I thought Forbort was very solid. Uh, just a reliable depth defenseman. He got it, two hits? Yeah. It, it, he's kind of has enough jam in his game where, like, that's been lacking a bit since we lost Derek England in the expansion draft. And, you know, it's nice to see a little bit of that come back into the lineup. And, uh, you know, tentatively, it's nice to see. And we'll see how, like, down the stretch, how he progresses. And, you know, if there's more to his game than what showed. But for a quality third pairing guy not much to complain about Matt you and I've talked a few times this year about how the Flames can't put in a 60 minute effort this year and I don't know about you but when I look at this one this was probably the best 60 minute effort we've seen from this Calgary Flames roster this year well this is the way they need to play if they actually want to do anything this season and you know just to put it succinctly like you know you if they don't put efforts like this when the games actually matter they're just simply not going to go far in the playoffs if they make it there. Well, not just when they matter. I mean, if you can play a game like this against the Bruins, and I thought this was a solid game offensively, defensively, transitionally. Like, they did a lot of things right, and everybody on the roster seemed to be clicking. Even, you know, Backland, who has struggled for a lot of the year, got his 13th and 14th. Like, if you can play this way against the Bruins, can you imagine if they were to play this way against the Red Wings or the Kings? I know, and, well, if they played like this every game... They'd be at the top like, of the West for, again. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, even if you just take a handful of the games that they gave away to some of the loser teams in the, our conference, you know, it, it wouldn't take very much to go from where we are now to where St. Louis is. Yeah, this was a pretty impressive Flames win. Backland had three points in the night. Monaghan scored twice for the Flames. 
Um, Monahan's now tied in points. I, I don't know if they're top on the team. I don't think so. But he and Kachuk who are now tied. And we've talked a lot about how Kachuk has looked. So it's nice to see Monty picking it up. Yeah, and, you know, uh, a lot of people have complained about Backlund thus far this season, but Backlund's only had four fewer points than Monaghan this season, so, you know, he's not doing too bad. Well, let's move on down the road. The Calgary Flames went from Boston to Music City, as they call it, taking on the Nashville Predators in Nashville. There's the one game this week where I said, uh, the Flames can't afford, afford to drop points to their opponent. And what do they do? They drop points to their opponent. They still got one out of this affair. Um, Granlin ties the game with 0.1 seconds left, and the Predators end up steal, stealing it in overtime. We had Anderson get his fifth of the year. Backlund get his 15th. Monjapani got his 16th. Even though the Flames lost, not as good an effort of, as in Boston, but like you, I worried they might come out flat in this one. And overall, I was happy with the effort the Flames put in. Yeah, I thought the Flames were the better team, and UC Soros is able to steal games for you. Uh, he is a good goalie. Uh, you think that's what happened here? You feel that Soros stole the game for them? I, I think that the score, frankly, should have been more like 5-2 for Calgary. Like, if you had just an average goaltending performance from the other guy. Uh, on the whole, though, it was just a lack of focus by the Flames, frankly, to allow the tying goal with a few minutes left and then to get the lead back and then to not have, you know, the wherewithal to, you know, tie up sticks in front of the goalie. Like, I think that's usually a fairly routine thing but for whatever reason the flames kind of lost themselves defensively and that cost them the game and you know it happens but the, this was the kind of things uh, i was worried about after that boston game of them getting too high on themselves instead of just doing the work and that's been emblematic of this team even last season where like they just use their talent to get by and don't put the work in to get like dot all the i's and cross all the t's that you have like good teams do in order to actually be successful and win games consistently and like that's probably cost the flames about 20 points this season in the standings just from a lack of focus yeah i think to me the reason I don't know that I'd say Saro stole this game is I think there was some big defensive lapses by the Flames. Um, oh, for especially sure. Especially as the game went on, it seemed like they were lapsing more and more. Mm -hmm. and I agree. you saw what we've seen, I think, a few times in this this iteration of the Calgary Flames, which is they, they get tied up and they focus too much on... Um, they focus too much on offense and have huge defensive lapses to take them out of the game. Or I'd say even here when Mangiapane got them up 3-2 to two late in the game, it felt like they wanted another one. And again, they started, you know, big defensive lapses in the last little bit there that, you know, it's like at some point you just got to shut it down and play a defensive game, especially when it's late in the game and you're, you know, 3-2 three, three or even when they were, you know... Um, 2-1, they started having defensive lapses late in the third. Like, it just, there was a lot of glaring holes in their defensive game. Well, and that's the, I think the thing that the Flames will need to learn as they move forward into, like, future seasons is that you need to play based off of context of the game. And, like, Washington was very much like what Calgary was until a few years ago and like when Washington gets a lead they turn from like being the running gun offensive team to let's trap everything yeah and you know and the flames need to be able to turn that on and be successful with it and like right now it's just run and gun all the time and like there's no the idea it feels like is let's just outscore the opponent yeah and like that's successful to an extent like that especially in the regular season like you can just play like that and who cares and you'll probably make the playoffs and do well enough 
but in order to actually, you know, be successful, that was part of the reason why Washington continually lost once they got to the playoffs because they didn't have that other gear. And then, like, once they actually learned that, then they found success, won a Stanley Cup and all that. I mean, Mangiapane scored with uh, 1917, so less than a minute. And I just felt like at that point, they should just drop the puck, skate it back into their own zone and defend it. But it still yeah. felt like they were looking for another one. I think that's why Granlin was able to score. Yeah, exactly. And, like, yeah. <sighs> You know, like, uh, drop frankly, the puck, at that point, put five guys yeah. back in your own zone. If yeah. you win it, make throw a, it up. Yeah, make it. Yeah, make a dump and chase, and like if you get the puck, flip it right back out of the zone, and just keep doing that. And yeah. So it seems like they were just uh, just a little maybe too cocky there. But interesting to note, this is almost the exact opposite of the last game we played in Nashville on October thirty first. The Flames end up winning. 6-5 to five in overtime, and in this one, the Flames got a goal with 1.6 left in the third from Matthew Kachuk, and then Kachuk ended up winning in overtime. So, almost the exact reverse of this game. Yeah, well, the guy who tied it scored the winner in overtime, and, and, uh, and also tied it, tied it with, overtime. you know, very few, few seconds left. Um, interesting note here, Giordano back in the lineup for the first time in a while since his injury. He came back to join his, his teammates again. Did you, did it look to you like he lost a step? He's not 100%. And I think that that's quite clear, but it, it's part of the, you know, playoff rush type of thing where you just got to throw everybody out there and hope for the best. He so. looked better to me than I expected him to. I expected him to look a little further behind than he was. Yeah. It, it Not ideal, but not bad. Like, it, it, you know, it, he's not like top end Giordano, but, you know, it is what it is. Like, you know, he's it, normally that injury takes like six weeks to heal. Well, that's why I was expecting him to look a lot worse because I thought he wasn't fully healed. And then just a note here, uh, Rasmus Anderson gets his fifth of the career, which is uh, or sorry, the fifth of the season, which is a career high for him and 20th point of the year, another career high. So for a guy that just got a raise, um, good to see some career high numbers from him. I think we're going to see those numbers continue going up every year. Yeah, I think that like when he's in his prime, he'll probably be an eight to ten goal a season, and like thirty five ish point type guy. Yeah, he's. I I don't think I think you're right. He's not a huge offensive defenseman, but a good puck mover, and I think it's going to be a lot more assists than goals. I think eight to ten if he's lucky. Mm-hmm. Well, Matt, let's head over to Florida. The Flames played the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning an afternoon game on Saturday and taking on a team that I don't want to say there's a rivalry, but there's become a little bit of a of hatred between these two teams, I think, ever since the 04 playoffs and even their fans. And this was a game where the Lightning got off to a good start. They got a 3 nothing lead against Calgary. Calgary was able to come back into this one, but ultimately couldn't get it done and dropped a 4-3 game to the Lightning in, in uh, regulation. What, what were your thoughts here? Well, this is one of those games where they weren't ready to go. Didn't start and, on time, as Jeff Ward likes to say. Yeah, and like the shots, I think at one point were something like twenty-seven to six. Like, yeah, you're not gonna win very many games doing that. And you know, full credit, yeah, they came back to make it interesting. But this is the same stuff that's been happening all year, where they're not ready to go and. Oh crap! We're down three or four nothing. Oh, we have to try. And then they, when they actually try, they actually get some success and nearly tie it. Last year they were getting a lot of those games where they were actually coming back and winning them, and that hasn't really materialized that this year. But you know, it's just not a sustainably successful method of playing games. And you know, like especially a team like Tampa. Like, easily this could have been a lot longer of a score, like eight or nine goals for Lightning if, 
you know, the Flames goalies weren't playing well. And I felt in this one, like, um, when we got down by three, we were done. Like, you know, just the, the way the guys were playing, the way they were reacting, I felt like they weren't going to come back. I think it's amazing that we ended up getting three goals here. But even when Killhorn made it 4-2, I thought, yeah, this one's over. Yeah, same here. You could just see the sort of the motivation on these guys get lower and lower and lower and lower as the game went on. Yeah, and it, this has been emblematic of this season. And, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, like... If we're going to lose one, point, we might as well lose to the East, right? Yeah, and not only that, like, this team is trending to be a wild card team at best. And, you know, this kind of inconsistency is should be expected from teams like that. Yeah, wildcard teams have flaws. That's why they're wildcard teams. Yeah, because if we had everything together, the Flames would have probably already clinched the division or just, you know, playing out the string again. Well, the last game of this Florida road trip, and the road trip in general, was against your second favorite team, the Florida Panthers. And uh, the Flames take more penalties, get out hit, uh, they lose more faceoffs, and they get outshot, but still manage to win this game in 3 nothing. And I think here we have to credit this one to Cam Talbot. Would you disagree with that? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I, I, Talbot. Like, he made a lot of saves, but Florida kind of sucked in this one. Like, I wasn't seeing a lot of dynamic scoring chances from them, and they looked rather flat despite, you know, controlling the game most of the time. Like, it was, there was not a ton of dangerous chances, but, you know, Talbot does definitely deserved, z- deserves uh, a lot of acclaim for getting the 38 save shutout but you know uh, I thought that the Flames were the better team in the game in terms of generating chances I just you know and that typically is how it goes when uh, teams are trailing because like the Flames got the early goal they try to score and so they throw more pucks at the net and plus, Florida's desperate. Like, they're only a few points behind the Toronto Maple Leafs for that playoff spot. So, they're going for it. And, you know, it, it is what it is. The Flames definitely, I think, had more, you know, dangerous chances here. More chances right in front, that sort of thing. But I thought that the Flames' defense didn't look great in this one to me. And I think that Talbot really helped kind of keep that calm and, you know, keep pucks out and give them some confidence. Oh, the team as a whole kind of like you the can Flames tell they're done with the road trip, were not, didn't you? Yeah, like they weren't as cohesive as they normally were, and that's but they were able to keep the Panthers mostly to the outside. And like as a goalie, you know, you always prefer shots from the outside because those tend to be like easy routine saves as long as you can eat the rebounds. And Talbot was able to eat the rebounds in most of the cases. And, like, I just, like, I never felt, like, any severe danger from anything that Florida was throwing at the Flames. And, yeah, it it certainly wasn't like the Tampa game where, you know, it's like, oh, they're going to (laughs) score. Yeah, two two very different teams, too, though. Oh, true. But there's, like, a lot of the chances that Tampa was getting were a lot more in like the prime areas to score and I didn't really feel that was as much the case with the Panthers and it makes sense because you know Florida's not nearly as good as Tampa Florida so. played didn't play um you know their their big gun Bobrovsky and net do you think that the fact that they had a maybe lesser known goaltender less experienced goaltender net worked to the Flames favor do you think it would have happened the same way either way well the Flames curiously have Bobrovsky's number and, they do, uh, like that, and I think that's why we ended up facing Montembo, um, just because, yeah, uh, for whatever reason, we have his number, and like that, there was that game in Columbus a couple of years ago where like they got like six goals on him, like halfway through the game, and yeah, like just 
he's not good against Calgary for whatever Mountain reason. Montembeau has now played 25 NHL career games, I believe, and this is first one against the Flames. Yep. So, you know, I thought it was a good end to the road trip, and this is sometimes what you've got to put together is, you know what, even though the team probably didn't look as good as they could have or maybe would have liked them to have looked, um, they found a way to win, right? And a big shutout win, but especially as a playoff team, sometimes you've just got to find that way to win, and that to me is what this one felt. You could tell they were tired, sluggish. It was an afternoon game, but they found the way to get the win. Yeah, and Calgary just needs to go to work. And, you know, like a game like that, like it, even if like the other team is skating around you a bit, like Florida was, just be a patient, let the game carry on, you know, make sure that they're not getting any high danger things thrown at you, and just be patient, keep with it, plug along, you know, make it boring, and keep going. And Calgary was able to do that and run the clock out and get the 3 nothing win. Well, with that, the Flames now sit third in the Pacific Division. They have 67 games played. They have won 34, lost 26, and have seven overtime losses for a total of 75 points. The Oilers are right above us at 76, holding down the second spot in the Pacific, and Vegas. Uh, you can actually make that 78. They're up 8 oh, are they? right okay. now. So. And uh, Vegas <laughs> has got 80. Right below us is the Canucks at 74, and Nashville at 72. So quite a tight Pacific Division race going on right now. Um, Matt, I think we're starting to see some separation, or we'll start seeing some separation here in the next week maybe two weeks how do you think that the pacific division is going to shake out when all said and done this year well i don't think vegas is going to sustainably stay way out in front of everybody well, I if think edmonton's that, at 78 like, they're only two them. points away now yeah i think that edmonton may end up winning the division um and you know that's surprising for me to say, but you know, I think I'm hanging that, up on you. Yeah, I I know. I feel like hanging up on myself. Go there. sit in the corner and think about uh, what you said. We'll resume the show later. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but no, I just I don't see Vegas having as much with it to like they they just finished an eight game winning streak. Usually, after that you slide a bit. So I think that. You know, it's they're not gonna. They're only five points up on the Flames with even games played, so I don't see it being. You know that much of a separation, and uh, I think Edmonton might make up that. So, who do think number two is? Vegas, uh, Calgary, or somebody else? I think that uh, probably Vegas. It, either them or us, and it'll be close. I think all three will be within like four points at the end of the season i don't you know i think it really will come down to those april games oddly enough against vegas and edmonton uh to close out the season to, to determine who's going to win the division i think the fact for me the fact that the canucks just lost their starting goaltender um demko and Deming is not a, a tandem that's going to get you anywhere but i think if it wasn't for vancouver losing their starter i would think Calgary's going to be a wild card team yeah uh vancouver like that's just brutal timing for them having them lose their goaltender right after the trade deadline technically you could still trade for a goalie you just couldn't use him in the playoffs yeah which okay great now we get to play our loser backup get him in the playoffs and hope that domingue can come to life Um, yeah so i i think I think Vegas is going to find a way to hold on. I think that the the top three in the Pacific is going to look like it does now. I think it'll be Vegas number one. I don't think they're going to be like five, six points up, but I think they're going to barely sneak in to number one. I think Edmonton's going to be two and Calgary's going to be three. I think the wild card teams will probably be Nashville, Winnipeg. That's where I'm going with maybe win a, uh, Minnesota. Um, Instead of who? In there. Uh, one, probably Winnipeg just because their Nashville, defense is Minnesota. better. Nashville, Minnesota? Yeah. It, I think that, again, all of those teams I think will be within three or four points. 
at the end of the season. It it should be rather tight. And even looking, I think Air, I think Arizona and Vancouver are going to fall off the map now. Like I don't see them being any danger of making the playoffs. I so badly want case. Arizona to go and flip Hall at the deadline. Oh, I know. Well, what would be even better for us is if uh, he just walks at the end of the season and like they lose all of that assets and don't even make the playoffs. <laughs> like, like that would just you know really hurt. Like they've been a team, playoff tweener team for years, and just you know they make that big play and still can't make the playoffs. It tells you there's more work to be done there. Um, yeah. But looking at that, let's say it is Vegas, Edmonton, Calgary let's say Nashville, Winnipeg, Minnesota, some combination of those, what, six teams? Is there anybody yeah. in that grouping? We'll keep the central teams out for now. Is there anyone in that grouping you look at and say, there's no way Calgary can win a seven-game series? I think if that's those six, anybody could beat anybody else in a seven-game series, just who comes ready to play. Yeah. like uh, If the Flames... If the Flames think, aren't yeah, ready to play, they're going to lose like they did to Colorado. But if they play a game like they did in Boston, oh, yeah. I think they have a shot of beating any of those teams in a best seven series. Yeah, I think that the toughest of any of those teams would frankly be the Edmonton Oilers just due to the fact of McDavid and Dreisaitl. Uh, just because, like, last year McKinnon ran over the Flames and, you know, those two could do very much the same depth wise the rest of the Oilers is nothing to really be concerned I know where about, you're going but, with that you know, I feel it's... like though if you look at the defensive pairings we have now Geo Brody Hannafin Anderson Forbord Gustafson that's six veteran defensemen I think you can find a way to contain those two yeah oh I and know. that'll be um, a series where it's high, higher score wins and I think if we keep our depth scoring rolling the Flames could outscore them yeah and, like, I think that would be a long series either way. I think that would be the toughest overall series. I think Vegas is not as complete, and they don't have as dynamic of forwards. And I think they that, just lost like, Stone, Calgary didn't just they? Matches. Yeah, I, I think they just match up better against them for whatever... You know, like, they don't play well against them in the regular season, but I think in the postseason, like, if Calgary's actually on and paying attention, that they could do it. Um, any of the West or Central teams, I think the Flames probably win that series, especially Winnipeg, because, like, those defense are awful. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I don't even want to look at the, the three Central teams, like St. Louis, Colorado, Dallas. I think they'd probably have our number. But yeah. uh, in terms of the Pacific and the wild card, not saying Calgary's going to roll over anybody, yeah. but they, I think they have the chance to beat any of those teams. Yeah. Uh, it's similar to, like, the 14-15 season when we were playing Vancouver. Like, it, two fairly evenly matched teams – you know, like that year we were clearly worse than Anaheim and Vancouver was clearly worse than Anaheim and whoever won that series, you knew it was not going to be a long series <laughs> against the Ducks. But, you know, um, like I don't think Vancouver would have done any better than the Flames that year. Uh, and uh, this year, like if Calgary faces Edmonton in the first round and gets through, Vegas should get through and stand just an equally good chance of beating Vegas and or vice versa and you know like I don't see like any highly dangerous teams where the Flames are like oh we're screwed you know, yeah like, I don't think there's any teams where you probably think the Flames are screwed but I do think or at least not in the group we've talked about but I do think that after yeah. you know it's going to be a fight to get through any of those teams it's doable but i think it's going to be a fight it's there's no walk in the park here and i think that for the no. flames to go any further they're really going to need to have that stamina where it needs to be and not get too banged up because i can see just especially the way that this team's run out of gas at the end of road trips i can just see them run out of gas at the end of a long se or a long or tough series against any of these six teams yeah, and that's one of those learning experiences that this team has to figure out. And I think that, you know, and it might just be me, but I think that part of why this season has been so up and down is that 
I think that the team has been conserving themselves a bit at times and like I I think that like last year they were definitely focused on winning the conference and I think that they blew all their energy just trying to accomplish that and I think that like now they're trying to like have everything going right at the right time and that'll of course play out you know that we'll see if that's actually the case over the next 15 games but you know if they start playing more consistently good hockey then that'll make itself clear and yeah i we'll think see. last year they overestimated who they were as well i think they came into that round underestimating the avalanche and i think that was a big part of their issue yeah, well, it's just like that year that Chicago lost to uh, the Nashville Predators in the first round. Like, Nashville got better, and like, after that year. Like, they were the eighth team that year, but, like, the, the next year they won the conference. And, um, you know, I think that uh, Calgary, I think they ran into a very good Avalanche team who got good part way through last season in much the same way that St. Louis got good and you know as it evidence this season like the the Avalanche only added Nazim Kadri in terms of impact players and that's not enough to make you an eighth place team into this you know one point out of first in the west you know so I think Calgary had some unfortunate luck where they ran into one of the better teams in the conference in the first round, but they didn't realize it until, oh, crap, <laughs> we're down 3-1 three, three, in the series. And, yeah, too if little, too If Calgary late. slips into a wild card spot right now, looking at the teams above us and below us, I think at that point they almost deserve to be out in the first. Like, you've got – you're you're in the third place right now. You've got teams below you that aren't looking great. I think really you've got to show that in 15 games, which is what they have left, you can hold at least that third spot. Well, frankly, I it, I think that if they fall out of the top three in our division, that we're not making the playoffs. Outright. You think if they fall, they fall like, hard? You know. Yeah, well, I don't see... Like, if Vancouver or Arizona actually overtakes the Flames, I just do not see any calculations where Calgary falls below them and makes the playoffs. Like, I, I I think that the teams in the Central are too strong for that, and I just, I don't see how, like, unless, like, Vancouver or Arizona, like, wins out, basically, and, like, that's the reason why, like, say they each win, like, 13 or 14 of their remaining games, then... You know, obviously, you know, that's something that you can't account for. But, like, it, unless something weird like that happens, I just don't see how both of those things Yeah, I think happen. there's enough shifting that we're seeing um, in the Pacific now that, I mean, even, you know, I'm not saying they're going to make the playoffs, but even San Jose seems to have a little bit of life to them now. Like, I just think that there's enough shifting with Vancouver trending downwards, Arizona trending downwards, I think you've got to at least be able to hold that third spot. And if you can't, um, like, you know, I don't think they'll fall out of a playoff spot, but I just think if they can't hold that spot, maybe they maybe they don't, des you know, deserve to make it out of the first round. No. Yeah. Like, I'd, yeah, they definitely don't. <laughs> I think and and I think like for them to lose that spot, best. it means that they're in such a slump that they probably won't make it out of a spot like i think that you know with 15 games left if you can't hold that third spot it means that something's gone wrong yeah it'd be like them winning like seven of the remaining games and like just other teams failing to capitalize beyond one <laughs> passing us in our own division like i just yeah i don't see yeah it, if they don't finish in the top three then like that they're well, done. Well, let's take a look at those remaining <laughs> Frankly, games. The and... Flames have 15 games left on the schedule. Only four left on the road. Um, most of them are at home. This week they have a game on Wednesday against Columbus, Friday against Arizona, Sunday against Vegas. Then they have 
The Islanders come next week after a three-day break. Winnipeg on Saturday. Then they go to their New York trip. The Rangers, Islanders, and New Jersey Devils is their one road trip they have left. Then Tampa Bay comes to join us. San Jose visits us. Anaheim visits us. We make a quick trip to Vancouver. Then we're back here against Winnipeg. We're at home against Vegas and against Edmonton. So, Matt, looking at these 15 games, I mean... Really, the Flames' destiny is in their own hands. You look at games against Vegas, Winnipeg, um, Vancouver, another game against Winnipeg, Vegas again, and Edmonton. Like These are the teams that these are, as they say, four-point games. These are the teams you have to get wins against. Yeah, for sure, and even the Arizona game. And frankly, like outside of pretty much like the New York Rangers, the New Jersey Devils, the Sharks, and the Ducks, all of these teams are fighting for their playoff lives. And they're all either like right there or close enough where they stand a good chance of being a playoff team. And, you know, Calgary has to find a way to be on the top of their game. And, like, thankfully, like, for the next two games this week Columbus they've been having difficulty with their goaltending Um, Merlitskins is out so Elvis has left the building Um, and uh, Corpus Allo has not looked good lately so since he returned from injury so like they're just having a bit of issues and Arizona has been horrible since they got Hall so you know that's at least a little benefit in our favor but you know, Calgary can't take any team lightly at this stage. They need points. I mean, if in every we look game. at, <laughs> if we look at, you know, these games, I think if they, and they're not going to win, they're not going to go 15 and 0 from here on out. Like, that would be awesome. Like, don't get me wrong, that'd be absolutely amazing. And I think the key yeah, here, too, for a happen. lot of these games, the Arizona, the Vegas, I'd even say the Winnipeg games. You can't leave points on the table. Like, you can't even give a loser point because that one loser point come back and haunt you. If you're going to give up points at home this month, you can afford to do it against Columbus, New York, Tampa Bay, and Anaheim. I wouldn't even say you want to give one San Jose, but I guess Anaheim, San Jose, those are really it. Like, you you have to beat Arizona in regulation. Um, You have to beat Vegas in regulation. I think you have to beat Winnipeg both times in regulation. Yeah, like, you can't mess around, frankly. Like, there's no way that you can just... Like, frankly, they need to win a minimum of 10 of these games in order to make the playoffs and, like, have any momentum moving forward. And, like, it's going to be tough. And, like, especially with the Flames' home record of late, you know... I I know we were joking before the show of like have them in Airdrie or Red Deer and just keep them in Edmonton the and fly them in every day. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. and if you look at how many of these teams are, but, it's it's sort of a weird month because, like you said, it's a bad home record, but it's also either a competitive team or a non-competitive team. Those are really our two choices. Like Columbus, I wouldn't even say is a bubble team right now. Um, they're. I guess technically they are points wise. They're tied for the second wild card, but like you said, goaltending's not looking good for them. Arizona, you know, is a must must yeah. win. Vegas is must win. The Islanders, they're out. I think. Um, are they? No, they're okay. tied with Columbus. The Rangers are out. Devils yeah. are out. Well, even uh, the Rangers, like they're only four points back of the Islanders and Blue Jackets. Yeah, like, I, think close th- I think that's going to get sewn up, like, though. By the time that we get... I think get, Florida has yeah. more of a chance of yeah, making so the playoffs I, than the but, Rangers do. Yeah. Oh, so do I, because... Uh, but, you yeah, know, I think fun. if we look at this, it's either, like, <laughs> yeah. the East, where we don't care what happens, or it's must-win. And I'm worried about the Flames, because, like you said, they, they're they not looking great at home, and they've got 11 games at home left. And most of them are games where they can't afford to choke, and it seems like that's when they choke. Yeah, and I think that, like, another thing that Calgary has to do is, like, okay, you had a great game against the Florida Panthers. Yeah, not, oh, we're awesome, Columbus is in, eh, who cares? 
and take them, you know, lackadaisically, and, oh, well, Arizona sucked lately, take them lackadaisically, and, you know, like, you can't do that. Uh, Calgary needs to treat everyone like it's a playoff game, and until Calgary can do that with any consistency, there's things to worry about. Yeah, I- and we'll see how, you know, like, by this, pretty much this time next week, we'll have a pretty good understanding of yeah what i just I, I, I don't know i think that they're gonna come after that road trip they've got a couple days off honestly i'm expecting them to not play a great game against columbus because that seems to be their mo after a long road trip i think they come into the arizona yeah. game underestimating them i'm guessing they don't start on time and arizona beats us and after two games like that this team usually is so deflated i can't see them coming back for vegas like this could be themselves very easily digging themselves into a hole that's going to be tough to get out of momentum wise yeah um, which yeah uh, then it's like every game's a must win from that point and yeah uh, put it this way if the week goes as you said i think that you can start you know figuring out the lottery odds at that point because i still like, don't think I, they I don't fall think out of the playoffs at this playoffs. point i think they'll stay somewhere in the in the wild card but i i think that it's they don't have much of a chance in the wild card i think um, you'd almost rather not yeah. be in at that point because they, then you get a lottery pick but you don't want to see these guys tank it either yeah well we'll see like it you know that they will show who they are over the next couple weeks and you know if they can go on a bit of a run and a good winning streak and start to like sew up an actual playoff spot and you know maybe push for home ice in the first round that would be awesome Uh but you know ifs and maybes and you know that's what we've been saying with this I team mean, in my ideal season. world the flames come out at home they have a great game against the jackets i don't th- necessarily think they win that one while well, they should but i think they play a good game they beat arizona they beat vegas they play a good game against the islanders they beat winnipeg like go you know all in for the next two weeks then take a bit of a break when you're in new york those three games really don't matter standings wise then come back here you know play well against tempa play well against vancouver and winnipeg and then end off the season strong but you know i mean looking at this team they're i think they're gonna lose half these games from from here on out i think I mean, just looking at how they've yeah, done all season, I think they're probably going to win. I think they're probably going to lose six or seven of their last fifteen. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see. Like, if this team wins more than ten of these games, which is doable, then I think you're talking second round, maybe third round in the playoffs. If they make the playoffs with fewer than ten wins, then it's uh, you know maybe a five game series in the first round and yeah regardless of the um, opponent and it'll be just interesting to see like it it will they have learned the lessons from last year and this season like last year like the teams that finished the season strong and had their stuff together over the last month and a half ended up going and stampeding through the playoffs and you know st louis being emblematic of that and colorado even and you know with our division being so well and and not only average so tight you know uh, you know you know like calgary if they get their act together and can play with some consistency over the last month they can book their ticket to the conference finals just because our division is so mediocre it's not like the metropolitan division where like one through seven are all awesome teams you know like it's like even the seventh place team new york rangers would be in a play they're tied with us you know or one point behind us i should say with two games in hand like and yet they're seventh in their division like there's you know we're in a weird spot (laughs) and like calgary 
you know, if they can get going, they can make a lot of damage just by being the best of the mediocre division, and probably will end up being the freshest if they can get through to the conference finals, just because, you know, their opponents in the first two rounds are, are not looking to be overly tough. If they can do, you know, get all their ducks in a row, but, you know, Again, yeah, I'm, ifs and I mean, even look back at last month when we were so proud of this team. They went on the road. They beat Vancouver six to two. They beat San Jose six to two. They beat Anaheim six nothing. Then they came back here and got their butt kicked eight to four against Chicago. They beat Anaheim again. Then Boston beat them four to three. Like, I think even just knowing this team, let's say they go on a bit of a run here: Columbus, Arizona, Vegas. I think they're going to get spanked by either New York or Winnipeg. So, yeah. Well, the, this team's been rather. Well, that's the story in, of the season, right? Is inconsistent. But even like over since that. Well, since that Vancouver game that you mentioned, like the Flames, they won the three out of four. Then they went two and two, and the, then three one and one. So, you know, not bad. Like they've been consistently pretty good. It's. You know, we'll see if that can continue. It's just, you know, we'll see. Like, you know, frankly, like, the Flames are 8, what, 4 and 1 in their last 13 games. Like, that's pretty good. And, you know, like, if they can basically match that and maybe add an extra couple wins and make that 10, 4 and 1 over the last 15... Like that's a pretty good. And I don't end even the think season. they necessarily have to win a lot of these games. I think what you need to do, and and I'll give them credit, they've done this. I think this last week, even in the games when they were losing, you have to look like you're playing playoff hockey. And I think if they can keep, if they can keep playing what looks yeah. like a playoff quality game in most of these games, they're going to set themselves up well for the playoffs. I don't know if I necessarily want to give them as you are the conference finals, but I think if you can. Well, yeah, it's just that, like, our division is terrible, so, like, if they just show up in the playoffs, they stand a good chance of winning. Just going, because, you know, their opponents, like, really, you know, like, we can go toe-to-toe with either Vegas or Edmonton and beat yeah, them. I'm, it's just, it's in I just Calgary's think even hands, if you lose some of these, the just looking at the schedule, you need to play... You know, a 60-minute or at least a 40-minute playoff game, you know, playoff quality hockey, and that's going to put you in the right spot for the offseason. And even looking at the last four yeah. games here, I mean, we have Vancouver, Winnipeg, um, Vegas, and Edmonton. Those four games, especially those last two, I really think could be the difference here. So even if this team is struggling early, I think they've got to get their stuff together by that Winnipeg game on the 27th. Because, I mean, you know, a lot of teams start to, yeah. to pull back a little bit at the end, but Vegas, Edmonton, and even Winnipeg in the last little bit there, I mean, those could be points where you need the proverbial four points over some of those opponents. I don't think Winnipeg's going to make it, but I think there's still a possibility for them, and especially those last two. You know, when we play Vegas on April 2nd and Edmonton on the 4th, I mean, you could be vying with those guys within one or two points of, you know, wild card or not, or even first or third place. And I think, you know, those are going to be must-win games at the end. Like, this is such a, a tight month for this team. Yeah. Uh, okay, I just have one thing uh, before we move on. Uh, as of right now, being March 2nd, who are the final four teams representing the each final division? Final four in, in each finals? division? Yeah, the, whoever, who's the last guy standing in each division? I don't know the East as well, um, but I'm going to go with... Boston and Washington. Um, I I don't think Pittsburgh's got it in them this year. I think Philly's a flash in the pan. I really think Boston's going to end up being the uh, the best team in the in the East. In the West, I think 
I think St. Louis and Colorado are going to beat the crap out of each other, but I honestly think Colorado is going to come out on top when those two play. So I'll say in the West, let's say Colorado and... As much as it pains me not to say Calgary, I'm going to say Colorado and whoever's number one in the West or in the Pacific. Which I don't think will be Calgary. And it pains me because I don't want to say Edmonton, but I think it might be them. How about you, Matt? Yeah. Well, the first three, I had that were my selections exactly. Uh, Colorado, Boston, and Washington. I think Boston wins the Stanley Cup this year. Yeah, I think this is the East year for the Cup. Like, yeah. there's no, I don't think there's any Western team right now that can be Boston in seven. Yeah, I think that if Washington makes the finals, the West team stands a chance, depending on which West team it is. Um. But yeah, I think your central division winner could be Washington. I don't think the Pacific teams do. Yeah. So who do you think wins the Pacific then? Still think it's Edmonton? Yeah. I think that Calgary is probably going to lose in the first round. And I'm going to say Vegas just to be different. But uh, yeah, I think Vegas will be the last Pacific team standing. I would like to see a series between Colorado and Boston just because I think it'll be fun hockey to watch. Yeah. Um, I think Toronto's out in the first round. Yeah, same here. I think Philly's out in the first round. Yeah, I think, as you said, Philly beats, or Pittsburgh beats Philly and Washington beats wildcard team whomever. And, yeah, Boston beats other wildcard team and Tampa beats the pants off of Toronto and I mean, Boston yeah. has 13 losses this year, and Detroit has 15 wins. Like, Boston isn't losing that many. I mean, you know, they're they're a great team this year, and they're a well-put-together team. I think looking up and down their lineup, they're the best-put-together team in the league this year. Yeah, I agree. So it'll be... At least we'll break the cycle. The cycle for the Flames has been... Um, one year in the playoffs, one year out of the playoffs. One year in the playoffs, one year out of the playoffs. I can't remember the last time they were in two years in a row. So, at uh, least I think can... you have to go back to like 2008, 2009. So if they can make it, at least they'll buck that trend. Yeah, because I think there was like five years, four years after the uh, walkout that they made the playoffs. I'm not worried yeah. about these guys falling out of the playoffs like you are. I'm just worried that they limp along this this month get the points they need to stay in and then you know are out in four or five like i think they've got to look at these last 15 as really two seven game playoff series well and that's the thing like calgary i think in order to have status quo even with this team um where you're not like making foundational changes to this team the flames need to win around in the playoffs and i think that like anything less than that is you're looking at making structural changes to the whole dynamic of the the organization at that point and uh whether that's like a mini rebuild or you know some swapping around of things to you know and like every year like teams have changes but like there's more of like a foundational piece not uh secondary depth guy type trades or stuff like that um but yeah i think uh, if calgary it really the ball's in their court talent wise the flames have the single most talent of anybody in our division and if they actually are pulling in the same direction they will win the first two rounds it's just that all season we've been waiting for that and it hasn't materialized so If it does, awesome, but, uh, you know, they have to actually put up and, you know, like, hey, we can actually do this, you know, and I think the Flames are probably the best built for the playoffs of any of the West, the teams in our division. I was going to say, I don't think the West, I could argue the the Pacific. Yeah, I think St. Louis and Dallas are a little bit better. I think Colorado, too. Yeah. I uh, I could see Dallas beating Colorado in the first round. 
because their defense is just that good. Yeah, it's, like it's like gonna Bishop, be year. like that. You know, Bishop could be the equalizer there. I think that if uh, St. Louis plays Dallas in the first round, I think Dallas might win that one. Well, Matt, looking that we've got 15 games left, if we're thinking in a playoff mentality, do you think it's fair to say that, I mean, let's just round it off to 14. If we're looking at this as two playoff series, do you think it's fair to say that success for this month then means uh, you got to win eight? You got to win. Oh, easily. They need a minimum of eight wins. Any less than that, I don't think they even make the playoffs for one and two. Like if they only win, say, seven of the 15 and they still make the playoffs. So it's like, yeah, great, awesome, you suck. Like I think like, to prove yeah. this team deserves a playoff spot, I think they've they need ten minimum to for me anyhow. Like yeah, I, I think that, to, like, ten would be ideal. But I think if you can win four of every seven, which gives you eight wins, I mean on average, I think that's what you got to do. You got to win four of every seven this month, essentially. Yeah, I think ten would be ideal to like. Tends Get, a stretch. Uh, oh yeah, I'm not saying it isn't, but you know, if you want to, like, hey, we're awesome and we're ready to go for game one, you need ten, and you know that's going to be tough. But you know, they need to actually show up. And the thing is, is that talent-wise, if you look at like who they're playing, they are a more talented team than Columbus. They are a more talented team than Arizona. About on par with Vegas. And the Islanders, in ter- you know, like, the, it, that's more even. Uh, they're more talented than Winnipeg, New York, New Jersey, San Jose, Anaheim, Vancouver, arguably. So, you know, like, there's only a handful of toss-up games throughout this whole month. Like, there's only five that I see, seven in total, that are toss-ups in terms of talent. And, like, everything else, like, the Flames are clearly the more talented team. So, if they can win the games against the teams that they're more talented than, you know, at least majority of them, they should, like, they should, frankly, because they are better than them, that'll give them a good springboard against the teams that are more closely in their ballpark. Well, of all those games, let's focus on three of them. Let's take a look at this next week. And um, and what the Flames are going to do is we predict what's going to go on. Last week, neither of us was right. Um, I thought that we were going to win against Nashville and Tampa Bay and Florida and lose to Boston. You thought we'd win Nashville, Florida, lose Boston, Tampa Bay. You were almost, almost the exact opposite. So we got three games this week. Uh, Calgary, as we said, plays Columbus Wednesday. Friday is Arizona. Sunday is Vegas, all at the Dome. Note some weird start times there. Wednesday is a 6.30 p.m. start, and the Sunday game against Vegas is a 5 p.m. start. So some weird start times this week. Matt, I'm going to give you my predictions first because I've already done mine. Yep. I, th- I think we win against Vegas, and I think we get one point against Arizona and lose to Columbus. So I think they're getting three of a possible six. Yeah, I can see that. Um, I think they're going to go all out, and I'm going to go for a sweep week and say that they're going to actually win all three. I'm looking at the stats here. Uh, Every time you've gone sweep, we've like lost them all. So, Yeah, I know. Well, I want them to actually listen for a change. <laughs> you know. Do it, damn it. I want to be right at least once this season. Well, not just not being right, but I'm looking at the stats. Like, every time you predict a sweep, we end up losing, like, every game. So, this is almost the kiss of death. You're going to ask for three losses. Well, you see, that's the thing. Like, every time I'm optimistic about a Flames player at the beginning of the season. Like, I remember one year I was really, like, amped about Sean Donovan. And then he just completely disappeared (laughs) from the organization that year. And, you know, like, every time I'm overly optimistic, like, even look at our preseason predictions, like, boy, you know, like, yeah. That, that was Tobias Reader's going to have a 50-point season. Yeah, I think I said that something like 121 points this year. Uh, yeah, no. Um, you remember Mike <laughs> who used to write for the website and he his favorite flame was, like, David Jones? Yeah. So... 
Well, yeah, no, I think that uh, I think that Calgary, it, if they're serious about going for it, they'll come out and beat Columbus because they've not looked good lately. Like they did just beat Vancouver, but you know that was more Deming than anything. I really hope you're right, Matt, because I think you've just put a curse on this team by uh, by predicting a a streak. Yeah. Okay. You guys, all the Flames, you all suck collectively. You're horrible, awful players. Prove me wrong. There you go. That might be better. I'm also yeah. looking here. <laughs> I'm looking here at the weeks when you predicted they lose them all, and they won at least one. So they do better when you predict they're going to lose them all. So keep that in yeah. mind for next week. Yeah. I'll just say that like every week, you know, from now on, every game we're just going to lose. Period. We, now prove me We wrong. better not be sitting yeah. here next week, as I say. May this be a lesson to you, young man. Yes. Well, let, let, well, hopefully hopefully they actually listen and go 3-0 this week. I, I'm hoping That'd you can nice. get on the board. We don't want you to get shut out this season, so I'm hoping they go 3-0 and and you can finally get a point in this game. Yeah. So en- enjoy the games. Again, note the weird start times on Wednesday and Friday, and, or Wednesday and Sunday, and Matt, we'll talk to you next Monday. Yeah, at least it's not 2 o'clock games like the weekend. As always, go Flames, go. Fireside Chat is hosted by Dan Stevenson, co-hosted by Matt DeBorg. This episode produced and edited by Peter Marino. Fireside Chat is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For full license details, visit firesidechat.ca.